guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry Channel. This video is the part 4 video of your topic 1.1 reaction rate. And in this video, we are going to talk only about one thing. We are going to discuss about the unit of our rate constant K. Alright, we are focused on the zero order, the first order and the second order. So from here, we know that the rate constant will have a different unit when you come across a different order. Just to recall some memory about rate law over here, knowing that your rate law equation is written as this, and it will be based on the reactant in your equation, knowing that the rate law will be the rate of the reaction equals to the K, concentration of the reactant to the power of its respective order knowing that that is the order of the reaction. So, you should know already what is the R, what is the K, what is the concentration, and what is the X, Y. And in this video today, we are going to focus only on one thing, your rate constant. So, in today's video, we are going to focus on the K rate constant, knowing that the unit will vary, therefore, we are going to check out the unit over here. How do we derive the unit of the rate constant? Okay, so let's focus on the rate constant K. So knowing that that is the K value that we are going to talk about, all right, knowing that the unit will change according to the order of the reactant, okay? K is also a constant that will be proportionality between reaction rate and also the concentration of the reactant. You can see over here, your K will be directly proportional with the rate of reaction, but inversely proportional to the concentration of your reactant. The K value, your rate constant value, will change when the reaction change or when the temperature or catalyst change. So every single reaction will have their own specific K value. And the rate constant value will change when the temperature change or when you have the presence of catalyst. All right? Rate constant is generally a small number and also the larger the K, the larger the rate constant, it represents the faster the reaction proceed. So the larger the K, the faster the reaction. But most of the time, your K will be generally a small number. But sometimes it also can become a big number. Alright, but most of the time it will be generally a small number. Okay, and you can see from the equation itself when the K increase, your rate of reaction increase. They are directly proportional. So the larger the K value, the faster the reaction proceed, the higher the rate. And last but not least, the things that we want to focus on in this video is the unit of your rate constant will depend on the orders of the reactant. So your K unit over here will depend on what is the order of your reactant. I'll show you how do we get the unit of K later on, all right? So first and foremost, let's look into your zero order. Knowing that it's a zero order over here, that means your rate law, your R, will then equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of the reactant to the power of zero, okay? Because it's a zero order. Knowing that anything to the power of zero will actually equal to one. Agree? Therefore, you will then have your rate equals to K. Alright? So for the zero order, the rate law is actually your rate equals to K. The order of reaction over here is zero. So what would be the unit of the rate constant K? Knowing that your R equals to K right now, also knowing that the unit of the R is M over time. Alright? Your rate is always concentration over time. So rate is a M over time and your R is equal to K. Therefore, the unit of the rate constant will be molar per time. Okay, it will then equal to the rate of reaction. So knowing that time can be in many units, time can be in second, can be in minute, can be in hour, can be in days, can be in years and so on. All right? So times can be in any unit. Molar over here, other than M per time, it also can be written as mole per liter per time. That represents the same thing, alright? Or it can be even mole 
per decimeter cube per time. That is the unit k for zero order. So all this will be the unit k, the unit of the rate constant for your zero order. Where for zero order, the unit k must be molar per time. Okay, simple. How about first order? So what would be the unit of the rate constant k for the first order? Let's say, since it's a first order, therefore the rate law will then be your R equals to k multiplied with the concentration of the reactant to the power of 1. Your A over here is a reactant to the power of 1 because it's a first order. Agree? So the order of reaction over here is first. It's a first order of reaction. Okay? And what will be the unit of K? Simple. Your R right now equals to K concentration A. Knowing that your R is a M per time. Okay? We are looking for the unit of K. The concentration unit right now is also molar. So find the K. The K will then be the molar per time divided by molar. Can you see that right now? So you cancel off the M, you will then get your K equals to time negative 1. The rate constant unit for the first order reaction will then be time negative 1. And the time negative 1 over here means it can be second negative 1, it can be minute negative 1, it can be hour negative 1, it can be years negative 1, it doesn't really matter what is the unit of time. But whenever it's a first order, the rate constant unit must be time negative 1. Alright? So I hope you can see that how the unit of the rate constant will change because of the order of reaction. Alright, next, how about second order? So second order over here, you can see again, we focus on the reactant only. We focus on the reactant only. Since it's a second order, therefore, your rate law will look something like this. Your R equals to K multiplied with the concentration of the reactant to the power of 2. That is the second order. So from the rate law, we can see that it's a second order of reaction. And what would be the unit of the rate constant? So let's see. By using the rate law, your R equals to K concentration of A to the power of 2. Your R is a M per time, always. Alright? We are looking for the K, the concentration unit molar square because it's a power of 2. So, you can work out from that, your K will then be molar per time over molar square. So, molar cancel off with the molar square left with one molar. So, from here, you can see that your K unit will be molar negative 1 time negative 1. Alright? So, you can see over here, your K unit. The rate constant unit for the second order will be your molar negative 1 time negative 1. Knowing that your time can be in second, minute, days and so on, alright? Your m negative 1, m is actually your mole per liter or your mole per decimeter cube, right? So what would happen when it's an M negative 1? M negative 1 means it can be mole negative 1 liter. Or it can be mole negative 1 decimeter cube without the negative. Can you see that? So right now, when the K is your M negative 1 time negative 1, that also represents it can be mole negative 1 liter time negative 1 or it also can be mole negative 1 decimeter cube time negative 1 all right that all represent the same thing do you realize that so it very much depends on the question is using a molar capital letter m or using mole per liter 
or using mo per decimeter cube. But since right now we are talking about m negative 1, then it will change to become mo negative 1 liter, mo negative 1 decimeter cube. Alright? Simple. Okay? Let's try a bit further. Let's try what happened when it's a third order reaction. So obviously you can see over here from the red law, your R equals to K concentration A to the power of 3. That is because it's a third order. So order of reaction, obviously third order of reaction. Okay, what would be the rate constant K? What would be the K unit? Simple, your R equals to K concentration A to the power of 3. Your R is a molar per time as always. Equals to K is the one that we are looking for. Concentration is always molar to the power of 3 right now. It's a third order. So your K will then be your molar per time over with M to the power of 3. Can you see that right now? Cancel out the M, cancel off the M cube. You will then still have your M square. But it's a time negative 1 over m squared. So your k will then be your m negative 2 time negative 1. Okay? So I hope you can see over here, when it's a third order of reaction, the unit of k will then become molar negative 2 time negative 1. Simple? Easy. And from the sequence, you can simply work it out what would happen when it's a fifth order of reaction? When it's a fifth order of reaction, the unit K will automatically be M negative 4 time negative 1. I hope you can try to work this out and prove that this is correct. Okay? Simple. As a conclusion, this is the unit of K that will change when you have a different order. When it's a zero order, that will be the unit of K molar per time. When it's a first order of reaction, then it will be time negative 1. When it's a second order, then it will be molar negative 1, time negative 1. Alright? And you can work out when it's a third order, fourth order, fifth order, and so on by using the same method that I teach you just now. Alright? So what is the function of unit K over here? The unit K can determine the order of reaction. By looking at the unit K or the rate constant, you already know that your reaction is under which order. If I'm having a minute negative 1, I straight away know that when the unit K given is minute negative 1, I know that it's my first order. Can you see that? When I'm giving a value of 0 0.53 molar negative 1, Second negative one. Straight away, I know my question is a second order reaction. That is the function of unit of your rate constant. So it's very important to be able to identify the order of reaction from the rate constant unit. Okay? Let's try some example over here. Let's say if the rate constant given is 2.55 times 10 to the power negative 5 as negative 1. Looking at the S negative 1, you already know that that is your first order reaction. Can you see that right now? Okay, simple. Next one, if the unit of the K rate constant given is molar negative 1, minute negative 1. Guys, molar negative 1, minute negative 1. Straight away, second order. Can you see that right now? Simple. Okay, very simple. Next, when you have the rate constant K given is in M negative 3, our negative 1. So look at it, it's a M negative 3. What order do you think this belong to? Obviously, this belong to the fourth order. Alright, this is the fourth order of reaction. If you don't trust me, you can work it out by writing the rate law. So the concentration right now is to the power of 4. Over here is your molar per hour. Okay, your K is the one that we are looking for. Over here, I have my molar to the power of 4. So your K will then be your 
molar negative 3, our negative 1. Can you see that? So it's a fourth order of reaction. So I hope by now you can identify the order of reaction by looking at the unit of the rate constant given in the question. Okay, let's try other example over here. You have your year negative 1, just year negative 1. Automatically, guys, that is your first order of reaction. Simple. Okay, next, the question is giving you little square, mole negative 2, s negative 1. So, what do we have over here is your little becomes square, your mole also become negative 2. Knowing that your molar, a standard molar, is a mole per liter. So, obviously, over here, you are having your m negative 1 because you are having your mole negative 1, liter 1. Okay? But since it's a L2, liter square, mole to the power of negative 2, Therefore, it's a m negative 2. Over here, represent molar negative 2, s negative 1. So, molar negative 2, s negative 1, that represent third order of reaction. Agree? Simple. Okay? Next and last but not least, the same thing. Molar is always mole per decimeter cube. So, it's always mole to the power of 1, decimeter to the power of negative 3. So, over here, you have your decimeter cube per mole. Can you see that it's actually inverted? So, it's actually your m negative 1 equals to your mole negative 1 decimeter cube. So, this guy over here represents m negative 1. m negative 1, minute negative 1 m negative 1 times negative 1. That is obviously your second order of reaction. Simple, easy. Alright, so I hope you're able to derive the unit of k by yourself and also know how to use the unit of k to determine the order of reaction in your question. Okay, and it's very important to identify and know how to derive the unit of k so that you can know what order of the reaction we are talking about. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have any question, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you have liked the video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in the next video. TunePocket.com